Hello and welcome to St. Andrews, where we are a community of faith united by the love of Jesus Christ, building disciples through worship, study, prayer, and service. Let us turn our hearts and minds to worshiping God. Let us pray. Open us, Holy One, to your word and to your way. Clear our mind of daily distractions. Fill our hearts with the humility we need to hear and receive the message you intend for us today. And after having heard, send us out to go with your word upon our lips and your needs in our hands. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the book of Acts as we're continuing to follow along with Peter, um, the Apostle Peter, um, after the resurrection of Christ. Now Peter went here and there among all the believers. He came down also to the saints living in Lydda. There he found a man named Aeneas who had been bedridden for eight years, for he was paralyzed. Peter said to him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up and make your bed. And immediately he got up, and all the residents of Lydda and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. Now in Joppa there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples who heard that Peter was there sent two men to him with the request, Please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them, and when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. She, he gave her his hand, and he helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So about eight or nine years ago, I was listening to a lecture about leadership. And in the course of the lecture, the presenter showed a video. Now, I have no memory of who this lecturer is or what they had to say, but the video that they showed stuck with me. And I, I posted a link to the video on our church's Facebook page earlier this week. So the video takes place at an outdoor event. People are scattered about on this grassy hill. Everyone is sitting and listening to the music. But then one guy gets up and he starts dancing. And I'll be honest, he is no Fred Astaire. His movements are a little bit awkward, but you can tell he's having a great time. Now, for a little bit, he's just dancing there all by himself. Eventually, though, another guy comes along and joins him. The first guy embraces the new guy, and then they dance together. And soon after starting the dance, that second guy begins encouraging his friends to come and join in the dancing. Over the course of the video, many more people come, and eventually the gathering reaches a tipping point in which those who are not dancing are in the minority. And the narrator is what makes this video powerful. When the third person joins in the dance, he says, the second follower is the turning point. It's proof the first has done well. Now it's not a lone nut, and it's not two nuts. Three's a crowd, and a crowd is news. So the purpose of the video is to show how movements begin and the importance of followers in a movement. Yes, the one who starts the dance is important, but it's the followers who transforms the per first person's dance into a true movement. It was as I was pondering Jesus' followers that I recalled this video because we have been walking with Peter this season, and yes, Peter does feature prominently in the passage that we read today because Peter is decidedly a follower of Jesus. He was one of the first to join in Jesus' dance. And it's because of followers like Peter that the movement Jesus began continues to flourish. 
So Peter and the other apostles continue to live into their calling as those who are sent out with the message and a movement to spread. This is how Jesus' movement, or what became known as Christianity, begins to spread. It spreads not because a leader or two sat back and said nothing. No, we see that Jesus' message spreads because those who are so compelled by the message call others to join in. Those who are active in the movement find that they cannot keep it to himself. The movement itself is so compelling that they have to draw others into it. Now, Peter seems to be the main character in this passage with this movement that he is continuing to spread and the healing that he is working in Jesus' name. But the true causation of Tabitha's resurrection is not because of who Peter is. The causation of her resurrection is because of the movement Tabitha has around her. It's because of who Tabitha is in the movement of the gospel that compels her friends to seek out Peter when they find out that he's nearby. It's because of the community that surrounds Tabitha that is so compelled by the gospel that Peter gets summoned to Joppa. So let's take a step back and look at what do we know about Tabitha herself. So Tabitha, who is sometimes known by her Greek name Dorcas, is the only woman who is directly named as a disciple. Now, we don't know if she met Jesus or if she was one of the many women who followed him around in his ministry. She doesn't show up in any of the gospel accounts by name, but there are multiple references to women who followed Jesus around and were a part of his ministry. So we don't know how Tabitha fit in, but since she is given this designation of disciple, we can know that what she does and who she is is animated by her commitment to following Jesus. So Tabitha, as a follower of Christ, has continued the movement in her own way, feeding off of her own unique skill set. While being a follower of the movement of the gospel, she is also creating her own dance of ministry. Her compassion for the widows in her area stems not only from her ability to empathize with them as a woman herself, but also from her identification as a disciple of Christ, one who follows his way. See, widows in this time were the most vulnerable population in the patriarchal society of the time. A woman without a male relative to speak up for her or to provide for her was essentially destitute. Options for women to make, her own, make their own way in that society were very limited. But was Tabitha one of those women that was able to make her own way? We don't know. She's not identified as a widow, nor is she identified as a spouse to someone else. So we just don't know. But what animates Tabitha is a compassion and a caring for the widows that she sees around her, those that have been pushed aside or ignored by the rest of society. These are the women who have no one who can speak for them. And without Tabitha and her ministry, these women might not even have adequate adequate clothing to wear. The women at her wake show Peter the clothing that Tabitha made for them as a testimony of her living into her position as a disciple of Jesus, one who has compassion and love for the least of these. After she's raised from the dead, Luke writes uh, what Peter, that, that Peter called in the saints and widows and showed her to be alive. And that word saints can be a little confusing to our modern ears because sometimes we talk about saints as those who have died in faith. But the meaning here seems to be that those who have joined in the movement of Christianity are saints, those who have joined in the movement of being followers of Christ. These are the ones who have so embraced the movement of God at work through Jesus Christ that they are living in a new way. They are those who continue to engage in the actions that give us glimpses of the kingdom of heaven. So when Peter shows Tabitha to be alive to the saints and the widows, he is showing Tabitha to to be alive to all those who have been compelled by the gospel message 
to join in this movement. These are those who have seen the dance that Jesus leads us in. These are those who have seen the dance and decided to join in. These are the people who feel so compelled by the message of Christ that they cannot help but wave over their friends to join them. They cannot help but share the joy and the work that the gospel calls them to do. And because Tabitha, one of the dancers, is returned to them, the group of saints and widows can continue to be about the work of birthing the kingdom of heaven one garment at a time, one widow saved from destitution at a time, one saint at a time. After she is raised from the dead, we no longer hear what Tabitha did. We can assume that she continued her works of compassion. We can also assume that at some point she died again. At some point her labor was complete and her time on earth was done. But I want you to know that I have met Tabitha in every single church I've ever been to. I've met women who are so compelled by the freeing message of Christ that they cannot help but work to help those in need. These are those who continue the legacy of Tabitha, the casserole makers, the teachers, the preachers, the mourners, the dancers, the singers, the handywomen, all those who seek to continue the dance began by Christ. All those who are compelled by the message that God loves us. All those who show compassion are the Tabithas of today. All those who call others to join in the dance, even if we look a little nuts, join in the dance of God. The Tabitha herself has long since joined the ranks of the saints in heaven. She lives on in our churches through the witness and work of women today. Thanks be to God for the Tabithas in our midst. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, we pray that we might be given the grace to be faithful disciples of the world, faithful disciples of Christ. And so we pray for the world. Holy God, this world is peopled by people who delight in your teachings and those who scoff at your ways. Guide us, O oh Lord, that we might meditate on you day and night to be an influence for good in the world. We pray for the people and leaders of the world in all our diversity. Sanctify them in your truth that there may be peace and harmony on earth. We pray for those who are sick or suffering, that they may know your protection and care through our faithful service. We pray for your church that by the marriage of your grace and our faith, we may serve you and our neighbors. We pray for earth itself, your marvelous creation. Inspire and help us to be the good stewards you ask us to be now and for the future. Make holy all for which we pray, the poor, the infirm, the church, the world. For holiness and wholeness come from you. Receive these prayers, O God, both spoken and unspoken, for we are yours. Amen. To once again hear these words from Teresa of Avila seems appropriate with Tabitha's example. Christ has no body but yours, no hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks compassion on the world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands with which he blesses all the world. Yours are the hands, yours are the feet, yours are the eyes, you are the body. Christ has no body now on earth but yours. Friends, together we are the resurrected body of Christ in the world, and wherever we go, however we live into that call, the risen Christ will be with us all. God's love will surround us and the Spirit will breathe new life into our weary souls. So go from this place, and may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord be kind and gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>